Look, the fundamentals for CSL remain very strong. Um, certainly when you look across the industry trends as such, we still see that our core products, which is our IG franchise that we actually have with two key products in Privigen and Hyzentra, demand there remains extremely strong. What we are seeing on the supply side, though, is that there is some tightness in the market. And that really comes down to the availability of plasma. Um, we need that raw ingredient to obviously make the products that we have. And that supply side of things is still remaining quite tight in the market. Uh, as I said, robust demand sort of still sits there. If you look at some of the industry statistics, which is the PPTA type data, you're seeing underlying fundamental growth for IG in the order of some 7 to 9%. Um, we look to grow ahead of that as the market leader and we're targeting somewhere between sort of 10 to, to 12%. That's been a pretty consistent story over the last couple of years and we certainly don't see any shift uh, on that basis. Equally on our Securus business, uh, which is our influenza vaccine business that we formed a couple of years ago on the acquisition of the Novartis assets, we have seen that turn around from being over a $200 million loss to now break even, and we are well on track for next year to deliver a $200 million EBIT in that business. Uh, and that's largely on the back of the fact that we have two key advantages into the market. One is that we have a cell culture facility now um, that we're up and running in our Holly Springs operation. And last year, um, the CDC data that came out of the US demonstrated that the product of cell was some 36% more effective in uh, addressing influenza versus the traditional egg-based side of things. So that gives us a key advantage in that market. Equally, we have an adjuvanted product which goes into the over 65s and that market continues to actually be pretty robust for us. So as we look across the business, you know, we're some 8 billion of revenue selling through 60 different countries. Um, and we continue to invest heavily into our research and development portfolio. Uh, we spent over 700 uh, million US last year in research and development, and certainly that remains a key focus. We have indicated to the market that we would expect that for this financial year 2019, that we will have increased around about 150 to 200 million in our research and development side of things. Um, certainly, if you then look at where we were uh, just at our half year results that came out, you did see that our top line grew at some 11% on a constant currency basis. And that largely translated through to a 10% growth in our net profit after tax. We did announce an interim dividend of $1.20 Australian, which was up some 20% in Australian dollars as such. So certainly, um, we continue to not have a formal dividend policy, but we do indicate that we'll pay out somewhere between uh, 40 to 50% of our net profit after tax. We continue to invest back into the business. We have indicated that we're looking at spending around about 1.2 to 1.3 billion uh, in capital this year. That's largely there to actually uh, meet the demand that we're seeing. We have major expansion projects across each one of our uh, main manufacturing facilities, and that continues to be a, a key focus for us. I mentioned earlier um, around the focus with R&D. Um, what we did do in the last 24 months was launch five new products in our bearing business to the market. Um, that's unprecedented in the industry. Two of those have gone extremely well, being Idelvion, which is uh, uh, certainly has become the new standard of care for haemophilia B patients. Uh, and that certainly has a lot more growth ahead of it, uh, as we've actually got more market penetration. And also our Hagada product, which is into hereditary angioedema whereby that's actually changed the, the landscape for that disease as well. The previous form of treatment had a 50% efficacy. So 50% of the time it would stop a, a um, reaction or an event occurring. Our product is somewhere around about 95 plus. So it certainly has reduced the amount of incidence of uh, people with that uh, very um, critical disease in hereditary angioedema and stopping them having events. And so that's gone very well for us. And again, we do see that that plays to our core strength around being able to bring products to market as well. So as we sort of look forward um, and we're looking at some of our growth drivers, as I said, the plasma de demand for our key therapies remains very strong. Um, we also see our business moving into China continues to get some good traction as well, and that business will continue to, to move forward. Uh, in December of every year, we actually hold our research and development uh, update where we update the market on key areas. Um, just a couple of things in our pipeline that we have called out. One is around transplant. 
whereby um, we're continuing to look at the three different areas of the transplant uh, franchise. How do we actually improve the quality of an organ before it's donated? How it's actually received into it once the transplant has actually occurred? And the other thing is to stop um, rejection rates that can occur up to two years after a trans... Um, the, we've actually had a, um, an event there whereby the transplant has occurred. That is a key for us. Uh, we're able to actually have some existing products and move those quickly into the trial side of things. So that again remains a, a key focus for us. Uh, and equally, we've got the biggest trial that we've ever run in CSL, which is CSL 112. Um, recruitment for that has gone well. Um, which does play out to how we see ultimately if the product does actually prove up what the potential demand could look like. Um, so that has recruited extremely well. It is a three to five year uh, trial. We need to recruit over 17,000 patients into the trial and at the, at the half year we'd got up to 1,000 and that's continued to recruit well um, through this part of the year. As I mentioned earlier, influenza remains a key focus for us with the, the flu cell vax product coming out of the cell culture and also our Fluad product into the, as the adjuvant side of things. And we continue to actually look at how we can drive some further efficiencies uh, across the overall production network. 